Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Relics, and today we will be looking at an Advanced Wars match that I just completed. Um, this one is a Global League match. So this one is an official match where it is like the most competitive competitive. You get matched up with someone around your rank and you guys bout it out. Um, so you guys can see at the top of the screen uh, the day the date set for this match was on July 28th and it took us until September 5th to finish this match. So whenever I upload this, you know, that's how long it has been, but um, yeah, so yeah, it took us over a month, and a, you know, maybe a week, month and a week to do this. Long time. Um, that is in part my fault. However, I will explain later. What I want to get through first is all the beginning stuff. So. This match is a match between myself as first player, Pink, versus, uh, my name is Zweig. Zweig, I believe, is how you're supposed to say that. He is Teal Galaxy, the green one, and he is second player. Um, this is a map called Reaching Xanadu. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Xanadu. Um, yeah, not a big fan of this map, honestly. I hate maps that have, uh, the HQ farther away from the the bases the nearest base and even more so on a weak side base so I'm not a big fan of those kind of maps uh, I just feel like HQ should be near their bases if not at least their strong side because that's in real life that's how it would be right you wouldn't just send your HQ in the middle of nowhere so honestly that's just my opinion though um, as you can see we also have comm towers and airports so they play a major part in this game um, so yeah, um, once again, this is the most I can maximize the uh, field, so if you guys have a hard time seeing anything at all, I do apologize. At the bottom of the screen, instead of being vertical, we have the co-powers and stuff horizontal, so that's an interesting change since uh, this map is very square. <laughs> so we'll see how this all plays out. Thank you for watching, hope you guys enjoy this, um, so yeah. Usually in gold matches, I've been first player. Majority, if not all of my matches, I'm first player. So I'm not a big fan of, like I've said in the past, I'm not a big fan of going first. I feel like second player gets the advantage with the extra infantry. But then if you take that away, first player gets the advantage. So I don't know. There's no real way to balance it. Just it depends on the map, I guess. But uh, this map specifically, I don't think it really plays too much of a part. Um, but we'll see how it plays out. So, let's get started. So obviously, first turn, nothing special, right? Build an infantry, he moves that guy, and we continue on, right? Well, okay, cool. You know, simple stuff, nothing too complicated. And as you can see, there's we're pretty much doing the same things. So, nothing, you know, different really. So, uh, just throwing it out there, um, maps like this are kind of pretty big. Uh, global damage co uh, commanding officers such as Hawk are really good because you want to be able to damage a lot of units. And the more units you damage, the more uh, value you decrease from your opponent. So, I knew that going in that Hawk was probably going to be a, one of the prime choices. And so, basically, I decided, okay, hey. If that's going to be the case, I'm going to be Sasha. I want to take away his co-power as much as I can. So, at the end of day 5, Hawk drew uh, the first tank, the first vehicle of the game. Um, which is for me, I, I like to see my opponent build the first vehicle at all times just so I can retaliate to whatever they build. So that's my mindset. And as you can see at the end of their turn, they have one extra, uh, two extra uh, units than me, and as well as a 8k value lead. So, if we tally it up this turn, or if we go back to the end of his turn, um, oh, I did the wrong one. I did the wrong one. My apologies. Alright, so at the end of his turn, 
which is day five, he uh, has a value of lead of 19,000 to my 11. If you add the total remaining funds, I have a 22,000 22, to his 23. So it's only 1k difference, the one infantry difference. So right now we're in, both in kind of in a good spot. The only difference is he has a capture Leon. I only have seven properties, he has nine. So there is a huge difference there. So my turn rolls in now. Again, this is just the capture phase. We're still going for all of our properties. But I am going, I am jetting for the middle properties, you know, soon, as soon as possible. So I would build a tank on the same side as him, as well as the top, since I have the money to do so. Um, but again, you know, he could, he could do whatever he wants. We're not going to engage right away. He builds another tank on the bottom as well. And we continue our captures. So nothing special. I build another tank as well as an artillery on the very north. Um, there are some mountains here that can provide some cover for my artillery. So that's me thinking of head, you know. Just in case he builds a tank up there, I have the terrain advantage to defend myself. So now he pulls out the first area, the battlecopter in the middle, as well as a artillery on the bottom. So now we're, our infantry are starting to get close together. Um, the capture phase is now going to end, and we are about to engage. I build my own battlecopter as well to respond to his. I like to do a tank and battlecopters kind of tactics. Battlecopters to take care of any battlecopters that my opponent builds. Tanks to take care of anything like anti-air and other their tanks as well. So his infantry makes the first strike of the game, uh, getting stopping my capture and eliminating my guy. So, um, just real quick, I just wanted to go over the damage calculator. The damage calculator is going to be an important part of this game. So I look at this and I think to myself, what happened here? He shouldn't have been able to kill me by percentages. But if we go back another turn to these guys. The initial strike, 42 to 48%. That's how much damage that this one did to my my infantry on the first strike. So let's just say he rolled 48% maximum damage, right? Okay, well then I have 52% HP left. So you're telling me that he got the 52 right, right off the bat? I don't know. So I, was, I had 50% HP for my five and then two percent for my six and he rolled high on both he rolled high the highest possible on both rolls to kill my guy kind of uh, suspicious you know so again my motto is you have great rng play me because i have horrible luck and in this match you will see it a lot he built a tank and an anti-air and so, you know, it is what it is. I lost an infantry and another one got hit. But, uh, at, you know, it's just one, two engagements, not a big deal. So, even though he killed my guy, I get to hit his infantry for free. So, that's a bonus for me, right? Alright, so, now it's his turn. And he's moving out. Now he's in a position to defend his infantry at the bottom. And his infantry <laughs> interrupts my capture again. And once again, he rolls the highest possible rolls. So, I, so let's just go real quick. This time he attacked on a plane to my guy in the city. So again, he's doing that much damage. If we roll it forward, he did 4 damage this time. So anywhere from 46 to 49. And then on his next turn, his guy on the road did six damage. He did six damage. So he did the highest possible roll again to kill my guy. Again, another one of those moments where I just I was just baffled by it. Like the result of his infantry attacking me was just mind blowing. And I'm like, what the hell is happening here? Why is he getting all the high rolls? 
So, yeah. Let's move this out real quick. All right, let's just go back. All right, so my turn rolls in. Artillery gets a free kill. That's great, right? I use my infantry to go on the mountain and block. So my artillery is protected. Valcopter moves south so I can uh, defend against his Valcopters, as well as my tanks move out of range. And again, I'm building a tank, Valcopter, tank, and wound infantry. Uh, again, keeping up my unit count, as well as uh, using all my funds available. Um, want to get, want to build as many units as I can. So he does interrupt my cap again, moving his artillery down, and he has plenty of tanks as well. Uh, his infantry at the top, again, I don't know about the regroup, that was not probably not the smartest move, because I could just kill the guy. But he does move in, and he almost killed my infantry. But again, my artillery is there to defend, and I have infantry to back it up as well. So I don't know what he was planning there, but either way, it's not going to work. So my turn rolls in now. Again, infantry do work. <laughs> I got a kill. My infantry are now able to kill his infantry pretty easily too, and my tanks can now support my artillery, so I don't have to worry about them dying. Units move in. I stay out of range of the Valcopter and Anti-Air with my Valcopter. So, right now I look pretty good. Honestly, the north looks really good for me. But the south, it's a little shaky. Alright, so now it's his turn. He moves in for the capture. Also kills one of my guys. Kill. So again, here we go at the very top. This time I'm a 7. Again, the percentages say that it is impossible, completely impossible, for him to actually do 7 damage to me. And yet, as we see, poof. I still died. For some reason, I still died. So again, the damage calculator... These are the same numbers I saw during the, repl uh, the initial replays when I played the game. And every time I, I saw these things, I was just getting flustered, I was getting frustrated as heck. These things shouldn't be happening. And that's why I am upset about Advanced Wars by Web because of this. Um, it has a lot of flaws in which that stuff happens a lot. And it's unbalanced, it's unfair. So it ruins my strategies and gives my enemy an, an edge. So. I don't know, this is just infantry, but you'll see. You'll see later. So his tanks moves in, artillery moves in. Heck, he's not even afraid to send it right into the middle of battle. It's that he's actually begging me to attack it, so. Uh, this is now day 12. Uh, this is the start of day 12. Um, if we just go back to. Oh, I did it again. So let's just move ahead. My apologies again. Just want to show you at the end of his turn. So at the end of his turn, at the end of day 11, he has a one unit lead against me, which is that one infantry to start, which is good. But he also has a value lead of 6k higher than me, which is not good. And if you take a look at the, the income value, he has 22,000 income. I also have 22,000 income. That's also because I have 20 properties, not 22. These two cities right here, those, he has his, I do not. So I'll, I'm already losing out. So I need to somehow turn that around. So that's another benefit of Sasha, is even though I don't have the captures, I still have my my day-to-day -day bonus, which gives me 100 funds per city, or per property per se. So I'm already getting 2,000 extra to match him, but I'm still losing territory. So my infantry do work in the north, get kills, simple stuff, going for the capture. Again, he has this guy to interrupt. Well, probably not going to get that city, right? Again, I don't want him to get more, so I do go for the hits, and I'm going to move in to get the kills. So you want me to attack you? Sure, I'll attack you. Because he only has one Battlecopter here, so he'll have to decide which Battlecopter of mine to hit. 
So all my units are now converging in on him. I have four Battlecopters here ready to support. He only has one, and then this guy can move on his next turn. But he has also some anti-air coming, so I gotta be careful. But I'm giving him one choice to make. So let's see how that works out. Uh, so real quick, before I build any units, I do activate my power. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, I made him lose almost three bars of co-power by doing so. And then I build my Battlecopter, tank, anti-air, and infantry. So, okay, cool. I did a really good turn. Uh, I'm feeling good about it. And then comes some unfortunate news. He backs out. So now let's take a look at the Battlecopter on Battlecopter result. Battlecopter on Battlecopter result says he'll do 70 to 78%. He did 8 damage. So again, my Battlecopter took damage that it wasn't supposed to take. And unfortunately, that's not the way it was supposed to happen. Let's say if I was a 9, then okay, sure, I did the 1 damage back. And he would have did the perfect damage to me, 2. Or bring me down to a 2. But that was not the case. I was a 10, and he still did 8 damage worth, even though he shouldn't have. So again, if I did take defensive retaliation damage from the last encounter, that, uh, you know, which would be this tank, then that means he rolled the highest possible rolls to do extra damage against me. So if we take a look here, if I was a 10 and I attacked this 10 tank, his, his tank went down to a 5. He's doing 5 to 9 retaliatory damage. In that case, if he did roll highest possible with that Battlecopter attacking me, that means this tank did also some of the highest damage in retaliation. So again, I'm not happy with that result. So his tank moves in, and he tries to kill my Battlecopter as well, which didn't work out. So there's something in my favor for ones. So again, not much happening down there. His tanks move in to destroy my tank and he moves to enjoy my capture. So now his troops are moving ahead. Again, he hit my guy at the bottom so he could stop me from capturing the city. Um, again, it will take me three turns instead of two. So a smart move on his part. But now my tanks and artillery can get some really good hits in. He doesn't have much to stop me from doing so. You know, stop me from attacking his units. And I got reinforcements coming as well. So I go for the Battlecopter hit now. Let's see how that turned out. So I should be doing 71 to 8 damage to 80 uh, 7 to 8 damage. And result. I did 7 damage. I did minimum damage here. So, again, I rolled low, he rolled high on his turn. I do go for the kill, but in doing so, I am going to lose both my Battlecopters. So that was not smart, not sure what I was thinking. I do hit the anti-airs though. So I think to myself, okay, you know, he has anti-airs, sure, but if I hit him, I should be fine. My Battlecopters won't die, but they will take hits. So I do go move in aggressively, tanks going in for the hits as well, gets the kill, sorry capture, I want to hit all of his guys as much as possible as well. So now it's looking really good. So at this point, if you see the power meters at the very bottom of the screen, um, I have my co-power as well as 23,000 in the bank. He, only, he has, has a really low value lead as well as a lower unit count and so I was thinking to myself okay well he's in between his power which you guys cannot see he's in between his power and his super so what will he do I was thinking to myself okay well even if he uses his power it won't be a huge huge detriment right so I was thinking okay if I do a move plan which I did do a move planner can he get his super and 
my calculations told me that no, it's just not possible. He shouldn't be able to do so. So in my in my head, I said, okay, I'm gonna save up. There's no point in me using my power of this turn, especially at the end of my turn where you know he is in between, and I don't think he can get a super. And if he does his turn, he should not hit his super and will be forced to either use his power or save onto it. So I thought to myself, okay, I'll wait on it. So I build units. And then his turn rolls in. So, okay. You know, I'm thinking I'm okay. And now his turn rolls in. Battlecopter hits a tank. Okay, whatever. So now anti-air, a four anti-air versus my nine battlecopter. Result, he did six damage. So once again, it's a 57 to 61. That's a four different percent difference. But again, did the highest roll possible. So what does that mean? He does one point extra damage, giving him that much extra co-power. So that, yeah, remember that. Remember how I was saying he gets the high rolls. It matters, right? The damage calculator. Tank rolls in, kills me. And let's do the other one. So this one's on a city. Attacking this 10 Battlecopter. Result, did 5 damage. And I did 2 damage as a result. So that one was in my favor. Surprisingly in my favor as well. Infantry kills my Battlecopter. Now let's see what happens with this one. So it's 10. Attacks my 9. And again, here we go. Look at the percentages, 78 to 87. He should not have killed me. So once again, the damage calculator lies and he did over 90% damage to my Battlecopter, killing it. And again, that adds one point extra of damage to his co-power meter that it shouldn't have given to him, right? So every point matters. So now his tank moves in. What's it going to attack? It's going to attack my tank, right? So again, here we go. 10 versus 10. No co-power is activated. What happens? He does 7 damage, 3% higher than his maximum capable damage. And again, that's one more point of extra co-power damage that he gets in value for his co-power meter. So again, I should have been a four max uh, minimum and was, should have been able to retaliate by doing two damage. How did that happen? How did that happen? So now we move down here and his tank attacks my nine tank. He did six damage. Okay, cool. You know, worked in my favor for once. But then up here, killed my infantry again. Again, we're on, we're both on planes. Sixty-one to seventy-nine percent. How did he kill me? He did not do seventy percent damage. That's another point. Extra added to his co-power, and he ends up killing my infantry, obtaining his super. Now, in this regard. He should not have been able to get his super just by doing what he's done so far. Again, every extra point of damage that he did to me should, just should not have happened. He should have his co-power off by just a tiny bit, resulting in him having to either suicide units or use more units to attack and therefore taking damage, in which majority of his units are infantry, or he could suicide this tank against one of my units. So. Boom. Superpower activates, which I thought he could not get, but he did. And in turn, all my units are damaged. So if we take a look real quick before he moves that infantry, his value now is higher than mine, even though he has a unit lead less than me. So now he's going to move in for hits. Infantries are moving in and killing me. And now at the end of his turn, which is the end of day 13, he has a 30k value over me when I was winning by almost 
th almost 30k myself at the start of this turn. Or end of my turn. How did that happen? So, this turn really frustrated me. This one specifically, because I don't believe he should have got his super this turn. And yet, the damage calculator in my move planner that I planned out for him told me that it was impossible for him to do as much damage as he did. And unfortunately, the game totally lied to me. So, I am forced to retreat. I have nothing left to do. I can't do anything. So I try to cover my retreat with some units. Again, I have not. Mu I don't have much left. Not many vehicles left. I mean, look, I got nothing to attack his tanks at the top except for this artillery. And that's only if he's dumb enough to move into range. So I gotta play defense. I gotta play. I gotta retreat. I gotta try and hold out. But again, he's mopping up my units. I just want to see that one real quick. So his ten tank attacked my eight. Brought me down seven. So again, he did the highest damage possible. He did a 7 instead of a 6. Again, high rolls. Every time he attacks, it's high rolls. Just like that one. The, the infantry attacking me, right? Again, we have no co-powers going. It's a 10 versus an 8. And yet, look how much damage he did. He did 7. Again, to me. He shouldn't have been able to do so. What happened? High roll possible. Regardless, the infantry is going to die. So that, you know, it is what it is. But it's another guy who can just maybe do one point of damage in return to his infantry instead of having leaving it in 10. So, at this point, I'm really frustrated. And his battle cops are just going to do whatever they want because I have no anti air defense. So, end of his turn, he has a 20k value lead over me, and he builds a Neo tank. Great. I got nothing to stop that. So, the only thing I do is trying to build a wall, build defenses, and try to, you know, hold out as long as I can. So, my artillery is in a prime position now to defend, and I have an anti area coming in as well. I gotta keep up my battlecopter numbers as well, though, because as soon as I let uh, my battlecopter numbers slip, he will gain. Too much of an advantage. So he is going for the captures, and again, I have a 23 100 lead right now, but once he takes a city of mine, it's you know, it's over. I'm gonna have a, the capture lead is in his favor. So he is going out. Again, I can't just blindly just move my units out and attack, so I'm still losing by a lot. My units just kind of continue to build my wall. I just got to make it as thick as possible. All while repairing all my units that I lost their HP from his super that I didn't think he could get. So I built another artillery as well. To help build my defense. Because I need him to attack into me. And re I mean retaliate. And so he does get two cities including one of mine. So instantly he gained the property advantage. And so he could just sit back and relax if he wanted to. And he is also capturing the middle city, which should be mine. So now he's moving his units north and bulking up in the center as well. So I don't want him to get more capture leads, so I do interrupt it, sacrificing one guy. And I try to poke my units out as well in the south. But that Neil tank is right there now. And it can destroy any of my units, including my battlecopters. If we do a damage calc on the Neil tank, let's just say he's on a plane. And he attacks into my battlecopter. He can do three points of damage. Based on how he's doing it, he can do three points of damage to me, and I only do one if he attacks me. And if we swap it, I can only do two damage to him, in which he will do two automatic damage back to me. So automatically, the Neil tank is just too strong for me to handle. So I do build another uh, artillery so I can try and hit the Neil Ting. So gets an instant kill, another instant kill, another kill. Tank hits an anti-air, which just sucks. And he's going to continue capturing that city in the center. So now he has a cluster of units in the very middle that I can't really break into easily. 
And once again, at the bottom, my guy's a 7, he's a 10, and we know what percentages we've seen before. The 61 to 69, and what does he do? Instant kill. Boom. So again, another guy who just shouldn't have died, and yet he just does. Nothing I can do about it, because the game says, hey, he's able to do it, so he's doing it. And it just sucks for me, right? So, yeah. My turn rolls in, and uh, I try and hit as many tanks as I can, because those are the biggest threats. I didn't get the kill. Um, let's just take a look at that real quick. So it's a 3 versus a 2. It says I did 17 to 20%, in which my artillery on the last turn... The artillery was a 10 versus his tank, which is a 10. I did 69 to 77. So let's just say it was 70%, right? That sucks. And how much damage did I do? So I did do... I did 8. I did 8 damage. A high roll went in my favor. So he's a 2 now, right? Let's just say this was like a minimum 80%, right? Somehow. That means this Balcopter, technically, should have destroyed it. Because this is a 17 to 20%. He, he is a 2. He should be dead. But it doesn't kill him. And the retaliation damage says he shouldn't be able to damage my Balcopter. And yet, look. My Balcopter took damage. Why did that happen? How did it happen? Let's just say he was a 3. Again, even if he was a 3, which he wasn't, he was a 2, he shouldn't have done a single bit of damage to my Balcopter, and yet it did. So another one of those things where it's just like complete BS, he gets the advantage and kills me. Which is so unfortunate for me. So I do leave one of my artilleries open. I am trying to bait hit him and try to attack this one. That's my idea at least. And in the south, he's letting my units kind of just survive. But see all these properties? I have no infantry to capture and I can't afford to build infantry really. Because if I do, then his units could just slide back down and attack. But I do try and see if I can get more. Um, before I build the Battlecopter, you can see his co-power. I have I've had this for a while now, ever since he had his super. So now it's time to use it. I get rid of his co-power because I don't want him using it anymore. And I finally build infantry. His turn rolls in. Neil tank hits my anti-air and they kill it. Tank hits my artillery. That's unfortunate. But again, I was trying to bait him in. His infantry kill my anti-air. And his other units are moving in now. So now he still has the cluster of units, just, you know, they're just all over me right now. There's nothing I can do. And he has a 40k income rate, you know, or a value lead over me, and now he has the unit lead as well, if we haven't been paying attention. And he also built a medium tank in the south this turn. But all of his units in the north are ready to combat all of my units in the north. So that's really bad. Um, so I try and hit all of his units I can. I want to do as much damage now that I've moved in. So I'm hitting all his tanks, which is really good. And as long as he doesn't use his power, he can't repair them right away. So that's what I was going for, trying to do as much damage as I can. If I can try and get hits on this Neo tank, that would be amazing. But in order to do so, I need to draw all these other units that can move in with it. So now I'm trying to reinforce. Moving all of my vehicles in the south straight to the north. He has nothing to stop me over here, so I'm free to move up as well. And I do do another market crash because if we take a look at his co-power meter, it is another three bars. And so even if I use my co-power, I can get it again the next turn. So I do use it, and I continue to build units. His turn rolls in, he charges in as well, using a lot of units to hit me. 
and I only have one anti-air, but I do have a lot of Balcopters to support, so that's a good thing for me. And he does get his Neo Tank in range, and he hits my Neo Tank or my artillery for free, destroying it. And he hits my other artillery. So now I'm like, well, shit. What do I do now? I have nothing to really take out that Neo Tank. This one's damaged and it's out of range, and this one's damaged and it can't really do much. So his Balcopters move in and hit my Balcopters. So now I really have nothing to take out the Neo Tank. I have almost absolutely nothing and he's starting to capture my city. And remember, he has a 3k value lead, uh, 3k income lead already. So if he captures that city, he'll have 26 to my 20, uh, 20, or 2900 actually. So that's really bad. So now this medium tank is chasing me, which is good that it's over here and not up here. But if you even take the 16,000 away from this medium tank from his value, he's still leading. And he hasn't even built this turn yet, so... Yeah, it's not looking so good. Every turn that passes, I get more and more frustrated about what's happening. But... And that's where why this game took... this match took so long in the first place is because... Again, we started on the 28th of July. And at first we did do a lot of our turns fast. But then, I decided to stop playing. Um, it was really frustrating for me to even look at the map. Every time he finished his turn and he went back to me, I was just really in not a good place. Um, even like right now, playing Advanced Wars, I'm not really happy with th how things have been going. I lost the tournament. Uh, this match was a frustration. I've been losing some pub games as well. Yeah, it, I just really wasn't happy. So every time I looked at this, I just didn't want to play. But every turn I come back, I do try my hardest, of course. And so the result is what we see here. Am I going to give up? No, I'm not going to give up. It's not like it's over, over. But it is very frustrating to, to, to look at the map and see what's happening. In any case, so my artillery that's healing gets a hit on the tank. Doesn't do enough damage. And I do try and do enough damage here. My Chili does hit the Neo. So now I need to really plan out my moves specifically. I want to kill as many units as I can, if not hit them all. Because I'm going to use my Co Power again. And I need to do as much as I can to this. That way I can decrease it all the way back down. So Antire moves in, kills the infantry. Antire moves in, kills a Battlecopter. Tank moves in, kills his Antire. This Balcopter destroys this tank. Infantry moves up, boxes is in. Tank kills my this tank on here. This Antara gets another kill on a Balcopter. So I'm getting really good hits in. I suicide my Balcopter here. It only did one damage. But that was enough for me to move my Balcopter in and destroy his Balcopter. So let me look at this real quick. My Battlecopter, 71 to 80% damage. I actually got a high roll for once. Surprisingly. Poof. That that right there was actually surprising. I was like expecting to use an infantry to attack it, but that worked out in my favor. And therefore, this tank can attack there, that tank can attack his tank, and this tank can stop the capture. And I could still use that tank to move out. Infantry can now wipe out the rest of his units that are there. And I do try to protect my artillery because this guy needs to hit the Neo Tank even more. And this one infantry can't even do anything anymore. He's useless. So at the bottom, I see I have my infantry going. I'm trying to my best to uh, move him around. So before I build, you can see our co-power meters at the very bottom. He has a lot of co-power. A lot of co-power. And I have mine, so I use it. Brings him down to a 3. Now I'm like concerned, is he going to get his power? But he has to do a lot of damage in which he doesn't have as many units as he once did. As you can see at the end of my turn, I take the lead in both value and units. So, that's really good. Artillery hits my anti-air. Neo tank finishes it off. Valcopter moves in, hits a tank. 
tank kills my tank. And Terra kills my Battlecopter. And Battlecopter hits my tank. Tank finishes off my tank. So he did good kills, but again, not enough. And then his tank gets a get hits on there. Tries to suicide his guy to get I'm assuming to get his power. And his artillery is just directly move up right behind his Neo. And he gets his black wave. He uses it. So again, I stepped him from getting his super, but not his regular power. I just didn't have enough funds for it. So as you can see, from before he used his power, he's already has the value lead. My 97 to his 125k. It doesn't look good. And then he uses it. I go down to 86 and he's now 1300. Or a Sorry, 130k. So huge, huge difference. That's 50, almost 50k difference. It sucks. So the only good news is, and again, his meat tank is here, as well as his two tanks over here. So he doesn't have as many units in the vicinity to use help. That's the only good thing that's going for me right now. So. Now it's my turn. Get a kill. Get a kill. Artillery continues to hit the Neo tank. Another kill. Antire kills Battlecopter. Antire kills Battlecopter. Right there. That was his biggest blunder, and I succeeded in doing damage to his army. So, using his co power, he can't get anything added. And I've done so much damage. Now I'm hitting his Antire. Knocking out his anti-air defenses. Now my Battlecopter here is free. This guy is free to attack as well. I have nothing to fear. I get hits on his artilleries. I want to make sure they can't damage my units. Move my Battlecopter in range. Attacks his, his other artillery. Move my other artillery that's been repairing into range. And I got two to attack this Neo tank. My guys move up. I trap his units inside a, a big bubble, hoping that I can kill the Neo, because that's the biggest threat. So use the artillery to kill my guy. Hits my tank. Tries to hit the tank there. Tank kills him. Tank moves in, kills my other infantry. Neo tank escapes. So that's very unfortunate, and he did kill my tank. Let's just take a look real quick and see the damage. So it does do 8 damage, I just want to confirm that. That's where the comm towers play a huge bonus for him. So now he sees that my infantry are here and are threatening his uh, properties. I have to go on the defensive again in the south. There's nothing I can do to do, you know, to defend against that. The only thing benefit is I've won the top, pretty much. As you can see, my artillery are still in range of his units, so I get the advantage there. So end of his turn he builds a fighter, and again, this fighter can cover a lot of ground on a map like this. I mean, you can clearly see, it can move north and south completely through the map. So that sucks. And at the end of his turn, he does have a 40k value lead over me. That's really scary. Alright, so my turn rolls in again, and get some hits on, my t on these tanks, weakening them just enough. So I can kill them completely. Antara moves in. A big hit right there. Big, big hit. Antara kills this artillery. So again, damage calculator did not say I can do 6 damage. And yet, and, and, and of course, in my, my defense, I was going to kill it anyways. I got infantry here to back it up. So I was going to kill it regardless. But the fact that the Antara did that means I can move my infantry somewhere else. So I'll move this artillery now into range of this Neo tank, and I'm going to go and try and box it in. Boom, boom, and boom. And now this thing is officially trapped. He has no units to stop me, and I can finally kill it. I can finally kill the biggest threat in this game, the Neo tank. In which, if we take a look at the values going back, I don't think the Neo tank made up for its entire value. But that could I could be wrong. I, I don't think it did. And if it did, that's unfortunate for me. Um, but I have taken care of it. And to respond to his fighter, I build my own fighter. So, 
there's nothing he can do to save his Neil tank. So he just moves his fire straight up into the middle where I can't even attack it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this anti air actually is in range of this fighter once I kill this tank. So again, this is a, probably a blunder, a huge blunder on his part that he probably didn't see coming because he probably thought, oh, this anti air can't reach my fighter if I just move right there. In fact, he moved his tank out, so now I can hit it for free anyways. And so, you can see in the south, he is building a cluster of units to attack my HQ. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure he's thinking he's got to HQ rush me. Especially when I have no forces down here. This artillery is out of position. I can't protect my HQ, and I have nothing to protect it except for air units. Which he built an anti-air to cover for. As well as the fighter that's here as well. So my turn rolls in, finally killed the Neo tank with my artillery, huzzah, Antire gets a hit on his fighter for free, and that is where I'm like, this is it, this is my chance to win this match. My fighter moves up completely, and I'm like, go ahead, you want to attack me with your fighter? That's fine, but I'm going to try and kill you. Valcopter kills the tank, tank moves in, blocks that, blocks that. His Battlecopter can't reach me. This fighter is officially trapped. And my infantry mop up that artillery. I mean, it got a... If you guys take a look, 3 HP damage? Could I even do 3 HP damage? I can't even do 3 HP damage. Again, the Battle cal uh, Calculator law, uh, lied to us again. And again, killed a unit that shouldn't have happened. Not that it mattered because I got extra guys, but... Again, I didn't need to rely on my superior luck in order to kill a unit and pray that it works for my strategies to work. I had backup units to back me up. Unlike him who didn't and he just got high rolls anyways and just kept proceeding through as he wanted to. So now I move this Valcopter over here. This tank has to go around. It can't attack into my Valcopter. So this was a really, really good turn. So now I could spend the time repairing all of my units. If you guys can see, I have my super and I have the money. He has this power right now, but now that I have my super, I could use my power two times completely without worry. And I only going to use it at the end of my turns. So technically I have three powers in, in the bank waiting to be used. So here's the first one. Bring his core power down almost all the way to zero. And I'm still building units. And now it's his turn. He's got to think, okay, I got to rush that HQ. So as you can see, he's trying to free his fighter. He can't. So he builds another fighter because he sees my fighters there as well. Units are charging to my HQ. Again, I have no units to support the defense for it. So now it's my turn. Again, he didn't get as much co-power, and I still have my power. So my turn rolls in. And so if you look at the match here, this is the deciding factor right here. This fighter right here. He can't do anything about these guys. I'm going to kill his one fighter here, and my Battlecopters are going to move away. I, they're totally fine. And I got anti-airs here as well to defeat his Battlecopters. This fighter sir, is... He literally got me the win. Right there. Moved right on top of my HQ. Nothing can move me. Even if his anti air gets there and attacks me, it takes two at least turns to attack me and kill my fighter. So that's what, three, four turns to kill me? He can't catch my HQ. So I move my units into range. Now his medium tank can't even get to my guys. I should have I should have saw that coming and he left my artillery like right here, but that's whatever. So now I'm moving in the north, going as hard as I can to move into his HQ and threaten him. And my units are so protected. I heck I even leave this guy vulnerable to his tank. Go ahead, I got anti or I got artillery here to back me up. Wanna attack my infantry? I got my tanks and battlecopters. There's nothing he can do to stop me. I got a Battlecopter kill here. Battlecopters move away. I get the Fighter kill. So now what? His Battlecopter can't attack anything vital. The only thing he can do is attack these two. 
in which I got anti-air. So now he can't do anything there. Again, I use another market crash. So if we look at the bottom of the screen, he has a three bars and I have my co-power and then some. Poof, all gone. And if we take a look too, I still have enough for another co-power even without having to do another turn. So I build more units. Again, more artilleries for the defense, just in case. And now his turn rolls in. This is now day, this is the his second half of day 24. Look at the, the value lead now. I have a 20k value lead as well as a 8 unit, or sorry, 12 unit uh, value, 12 unit lead over him. What can he do, right? What can he do? At this point, I thought to myself, this could be game. This could be game over. Moves a couple units and then resigns. Took him two days to resign after I did my turn. And as you can see the results, 52 kills with my 46 deaths. So looking at the stats, took a lot of hate. This was a big battle. It's probably, this was probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest battle I have ever battled out in my global league career, yet alone in general. Like just doing this video alone, you can you guys could tell in my voice how frustrated I was at times. This was a very difficult match, a very difficult. And I do apologize ahead of time, you know, right now to Mr. Zweig. I messaged him during the match and I, what I said was just not right. And I do apologize for what I said. I won't tell you guys what I said on stream or on this video, but uh, Zweig, if you see this at all, I do apologize for what I have said. And it wasn't directed to you. What I said was not directed to you. It was directed to the result of the battle calculator, damage calculator, not showing the results of what should have what should have happened. Um, again, many times you saw it. I was going through this video. Your infantry attacking ten versus seven, and your total damage was sixty-one to sixty-nine percent, and yet you killed my infantry every single time that's just one example and it just happened throughout the entire match where the damage calculator was just not telling the truth and we both mostly you but you got you know you got the highest rolls possible and that's why i said what i said at the time so i do apologize if you ever see this um but it was a really hard fought match uh props to you for giving me this match um it was a lot after reviewing it it is fun to look back on, but in the moment, it is definitely one of the most frustrating things I have ever gone through uh, as far as Advance Wars is concerned. And honestly, I am just so happy that I won this match. And it just shows that even though I am losing, uh, you can come back because your opponent can slip up, um, which he did. Unfortunately, Zweig did slip up. He let me kill too many of his units. At the right, at the wrong times. Like he uses his power, and then I kill like two battlecopters, hit some many tanks. He's not getting any co power from it, and you know, all the while I'm still gaining co power because I'm going to use my power at the end of my turn. So this is one of those matches where he slipped up after destroying me, and I still came back and you know made the match worthwhile. So yeah. Uh, as you can see, after, after the result, he doesn't have much stuff to defend. So I would have got the H cap going on my next turn, and I would have used my units to protect. Not really much he can do after that, and the match would have been mine. So unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, yeah, it was it was, it was a good match to review. Honestly, like I said, probably the best match I've ever played on on Advanced Wars by Web, hands down. So props to you for giving me a good match, Swig, and I won't be seeing you ever again. I will tell you that right now. Um, after playing this match, I realized I'm probably going to take a break from playing Advanced Wars in general. Um, how long that will be, I don't know. But I am going to finish out the matches that I am playing right now. There's a, I actually have two other goal matches going, so I do need to finish those. 
and I have a few pubs. So once I finish all my matches, I am going to stop playing for a while, take a break. Um, you know, this also leaves me time room for uh, hockey when hockey starts in September, October. So I have other things to keep me occupied, anyways. But yeah, so props to Yuzwig. Thank you for a really good match, and uh, thank you guys for watching this. I know this one was a longer one, but I really wanted to share this. Again, this is probably, like I said, the biggest match I've ever played, and it just shows that you should never give up. My brother always told me that, and I didn't give up. Even when things were looking really grim, I didn't give up. And I tried to play my cards right, and that, the result is I actually won the match. So, thank you for watching. Sorry for making it a long one, but if you guys liked the video, hit the like button. It helps a lot. Comment down below what you guys thought. Anything you guys, you guys like to say. Am I over exaggerating the, the damage calculator? I mean, I showed the results. You guys see the numbers in this video. So, explain to me how that <laughs> adds up or how it doesn't add up. I don't know. Just let me know. And subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps me out. Gets my word out. Um, and I can continue to make content like this for you guys to see. And, you know, I want to be able to play more games like this. Uh, I want to feel like it, my time here means something. And if you guys want to see more of this, I could, you know, I eventually will do more stuff. And even after my break, I'll come back and probably be refreshed and have probably good matches going forward. So, who knows? But, uh, yeah, for this one, I'm going to leave it here. 24 days, global match. I went up 40 ratings on this. So I was like a 944. I went to 9... 9... Or it was 80 something earlier today. What happened? In any case, it, it was up into the 980s, but now it's 973. So I don't know what happened there. But uh, yeah, so I went up about 30 ratings. I went up about 30 ratings, so... Um, yeah, that's the result of that. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Um, stay tuned for other content as well. We're still going to be doing Fire Emblem. We're still going to be doing some Halo, Pikmin, you know, all that still coming and coming out soon. So, trying to post on a daily basis if I can. And uh, yeah, so this will probably be it for Advanced Wars for a while. These matches really aren't going to be that great to look at. So, um, yeah. So, if you guys stuck around this long, thank you for watching, have a great day, stay tuned for other content, and I will catch you guys in the next one, Bye bye